Hey, what's up, fellas? Welcome to another episode on New York Prison Talks. And, you know, today I wanted to talk about main topic is what to do and what not to do when you go in the yard. Now, when you go into any yard, I don't care where you at in the state, in the country, probably in the world. When you enter a yard, the recreational yard, one of the first things you want to do is observe. You got to know your surroundings. You got to know who's who, where, is you, where you allowed to be at, where you can go, where you cannot go, where to sit at, who to talk to. Because it's different cliques, different circles throughout the yard. Now, when it comes to the max yards, maximum security prison yards, you really got to be on point. You can't just go into the yard and just want to sit down. Because you don't know where you're sitting at. You could be sitting at a blood table. You could be sitting at a king table. You could be sitting at any game banker table, a Muslim table, a Rochester table. You could be sitting at somebody that, a Brooklyn table, a city, a city table. You don't know where you're sitting at. So I advise you, the first thing you need to do when you enter any yard in any jail, especially in New York, spin the yard. Spin the yard is just walking around the yard, smiling like a track field, or it's some it's type of movement where you know you could just you're free to walk without you getting into any issues. Now, when you're walking, don't just be staring at people. You don't want to just stare at people. You don't want to be looking at. It's gonna be tables everywhere, where every gang members and people probably from cliques and towns and all type of stuff be linking up at their own tables and meeting up. Now, when you walk in, you walk in the yard, you just don't want to just start staring at a whole bunch of group of people you don't even know. Because you're new, and they know you new. And everybody's watching you. They don't know who you are, so they're trying to figure you out. They don't know if you're a crip. They don't know if you're blood. They don't know if you're a rat. They don't know if you're a homo. They don't know who you are. So, at the same time, you're trying to observe the whole yard. The whole yard is watching you back. Now... As you spin in the yard, just, just take a couple laps, walk around, try to examine as much as possible. When you're on the yard and you're spinning the track, make sure you're watching your back. Make sure you're watching your left, your right, your side in front of you. But at the same time, you're also scoping where you're walking to next. You could be spinning the yard. It could be a track yard going around and you're spinning in a circle. You make sure you, you know where you're going to on the other side of the circle. You see what's going ahead of you. It's hard. It's real hard because a lot of people be getting shot. Shot is like people getting cuts. That's what we call shot. People getting stabbed up. People just fighting. People game banging. A lot of people just selling drugs. All type of stuff is going on in the yard. And you try to watch that as much as possible. Then you got the COs in the towers. They're watching you too. They know new faces. They trying to figure out if you're a game banger. That's all they really care about. If who you are. If you're a game banger or you're a drug dealer. They want to know who you are, too. They might have it on paper who you are, but not every officer know who you are. So at the same time, they got a criminal mind, too. They trying to think exactly how an a, a inmate is thinking. You know? So mind your business when you walk in the yard. Just, just, just keep, just don't just stare at people. I'm telling you, please do not stare. When you enter the yard, do not stare. That's automatically disrespect. That's automatically a fight. Because somebody's going to see you, and they're going to be watching you. And they're going to watch to see if you're staring back at them. And if you're staring back at them, it's automatically a problem. They're going to tell their mans, and they're going to be like, yo, why is he staring at me like that? I don't know. You want to go check him? You want to go press him? That's meaning like confront him about the situation. And then from there on, it's just problems. Then from there on, everybody know each other. You don't know nobody, especially if you're new to the jail. You're new to the system, and you're not nobody known. You're not game banging, and if you're just walking around and you're just neutral, you're not you, like you're nothing. That is a problem when you just start staring at people. Do not do that. I done got into many incidents like that. My whole bed about staring. Why are you staring at people? Why is it like that? Me, I wasn't staring at people. But I had the face where if I even glanced at you, it's just it felt like I was just automatically starting trouble. And, you know, I didn't had fights like that. I didn't had a lot of situations like that. And you just have to watch it back when it comes to stuff like that. Because you don't know what's going on in the yard. You don't know if a riot is about to go down. You really don't. You don't know what's going to happen unless you're gangbanging. And unless you somebody known, you don't know what's going on. 
You could just be spinning the yard and all of a sudden a fight could just break out and it could be just a 20 man fight. Next thing you know, you're caught up in the fight. Whether you was in it or not, they the police is the officers is just gonna go right. They're gonna handcuff you and you're gonna get a misbehavior report. You're gonna get some type of ticket saying that she was involved in an incident. Because they don't care who you are. They'll just throw you in the mix, just to throw you in the mix. That's one less person they gotta worry about. Less one less person that's gonna come out they sell, one less person that's just gonna be in population. They don't care. You gotta really fight when you at your hearing. When you at your hearing, you really have to fight. And explain your situation. It's usually be cameras in the yard. You got to make sure you point yourself out. And stuff like that. Don't just be talking to anybody. Because they got gang members and everywhere throughout the, the whole yard. You got a rat section. You got the rat hunters. You got the crypts. You got the bloods. You got the Latin kings. You got the three bulls. You also got the homos. Now know who you talking to when it comes to the homos. You got regular dudes that you wouldn't even think was gay. That is gay, full-blooded gay. And you could be talking to him. And if one person see you talking to that homo, a dude gonna be like, yo, oh, he gay. He's a moo. He's talking to a homo. Look at him. And then one person see that, next person see that, then everybody gonna start talking about it. Every time you try to meet somebody new, they gonna tell that man, they gonna tell his man that, yo, don't talk to him because he's gay. And you're not even gay. You just got caught up starting talking to the dude and, and that's what happened. Now you're labeled as a homo. You don't want to be labeled as a homo in jail. Why? Because nobody likes homos. Nobody likes homos. That's not, that's not, that is not allowed when it comes to gang bang land. Not any gang. I don't care what gang it is. They do not allow homosexuals to enter their, their circle. That's one thing all gang bangers have in common. They don't like homosexuals. So don't get caught up talking to homosexual. Main thing when you first come to a, a, a new facility, a new prison, a new jail, you want to know what you're dealing with. So before you even step to the yard, if you got a neighbor, a cell neighbor, or somebody that you probably, that was coming onto the bus, that probably that came on a bus that was into the jail with you, or somebody before you even enter the jail and it's your first time, try to talk to somebody that you know who is comfortable and who might be valid. That can explain certain things when you enter the yard. Because you just don't want to sit. They might have bleachers out there, tables. You just don't want to sit there because you don't know where you're sitting at. You don't know what area that is. That could be uh, some people for Rochester's or some people for gangbangers. They got homo courts too. They really do. Believe it or not, they got homo sections. You don't want to be around it. Me personally, in every jail I went to, I would spend the yard, yeah. But I also would make sure that I went to the weightlifting line. I like to lift weights. That's one thing I did. I lifted weights. So soon when I would go to the yard, I already knew what was going on in the yard. I already talked to a few people. I already knew how to act and who to be around with. And I knew exactly the location areas of where I wanted to be at. I would go right to the weight line and just wait until the weight shot would be open and then just work out. And then pretty soon after a few weeks later, everybody would know me as that. He's just a guy that just likes to work out. And that was it. Now, you got people that go into the yard and start talking to the wrong dude. They might know you from the town. And you might start talking to them. And then little do you know that they're gangbanging. And you don't even know that he's gangbanging. And that they know that you probably the ops. You're the, op you're the opposition. You probably was blood. Your man's from the town. It is crip or vice versa. Your crip, your man's from the town, is blood. And and y'all was cool in the town. But now that y'all inside, he telling his man that, yo, he's crip. And then now they're gonna tell they're gonna tell your man to try to shoot you. And they lines you up. You just be walking, spinning with him in the yard. Next thing you know, you just get a cut on your face. And you don't know why. And then you're just fighting him. And then you're going to the box. You gotta know who you're talking to. You gotta know exactly who you're talking to, especially if you're game banging or if you're neutral. You might have beef with somebody in town, and you don't even know who they are. You might it's been might have been years that you've seen them. You just gotta watch it back. Always be on point. I don't care what you say. Always be on point. Don't just start smoking weed or doing any drugs. It's in the jail with somebody. In the prison with somebody. In the yard with somebody. Especially in the yard. Because the yard, let me tell you. The yard is real dangerous. It's dangerous because it's open. It's where everybody meets. 
Everybody goes to this one big area. And the, the offices, it's not many offices. It might be 15, 20 offices compared to like 300 people in the yard. Now you got a few in the towers. You got a couple offices that might be sitting at their towers or just spinning the track. But they might, the yard is humongous. It's like three football fields. That is a problem when it could just pop off anywhere and you might have five or ten guys on you and you just getting stomped out. You're going to get stomped out. They're going to stomp you. They're going to cut you. They're going to beat you up. They're going to make sure you do not win at all. I don't care how you try to win. You're not winning. They will make sure you will get defeated because they don't want to lose. Because if they lose, that's going to be a problem for them. Then they ain't going to have problems, but they are the homies. You just got to stay focused when you go into the yard. Mind your business. Don't say anything crazy. Don't be talking to anybody who you feel like you shouldn't be talking to. Don't be talking to old people. You got a lot of old people in there that just be wanting to try to get to know you. And literally, you know, they probably a booty bandit. Somebody that used to probably rape people when they was back in their 20s and 30s and stuff. But now they 50 and 60. You got to stay away from them type of dudes. Because they also be known as homos too. They are considered homos. But they're so old that they just... Nobody messes with them because they know who they are. Nobody just even talks to them. You know, you just don't want to enter. Just go go over there and try to get into the go get into the phone. That's one. Th that's another thing. When you enter the yard, it might be 15, 20 phones on one side, another twenty phones on the other side of the yard. Make sure you ask and see how the phones work. Because you have the same way with tables, it's the same way with the phones. You got the blood phone, you got the, you got, and within the blood phones, you might have the eight phone, you got the hat phone, you got all these clicks in the blood sets that have their own phones. Then you got the Latin King phone, you know, you got the certain area code, certain towns have their own phone. You just don't want to jump on any phone. Just because you see it open or you see the phone hanging down, you just don't want to just jump on the phone because that will be a problem. Dudes are going to be like, who are you? And then then if you try to explain who you are and they, they don't they don't know who you are, you're not part of the circle, don't get surprised if you start talking to you crazy. And if you're one of those type of people that don't like to hold that down, then that's going to be problems. That's going to be problems. So just watch when you go on the phone to figure out how to get on the phone. Just don't jump on any phone. It's always somebody using that phone. It's always somebody that has position on that phone, on every phone. You might have a neutral phone with just random people just get on it. Jump on that phone, but see how the phone system works. You don't just want to go in there. You got to know what to bring when you go to the yard. Because if you don't know what to bring, you go to the metal detector, and then you just start ringing and buzzing. And then the officers, just because they don't like people going to the yard, they might just dead you on wreck. So make sure you're wearing the right clothes before you go to the yard. Make sure you have the right stuff before you go to the yard. Because you could get spent back and then you'll just be in your cell for the rest of the day. And you didn't get any rep because you didn't wear the right stuff or you didn't bring the right stuff. You know? You just got to know what to do. Stay focused when you go to the yard. It's not, it's not, the yard is dangerous. But at the same time, you can't enjoy yourself if you, if you know, be with the right people. But at the same time, it's dangerous because it could just go down. I remember one time I was just walking in the yard with a couple of my boys. We was just about to enter the zone where it was about to be the biggest riot I ever seen. This was a big riot. It's on YouTube. The, well, they talk about it on YouTube, the governor and stuff. You know, to me, it was a big fight. It was about 30, 40 man fight. And... I never seen a fight that big where it just the whole yard was just shifting of people from one end to another of the straight fighting. You got dudes pulling out freaking sizes this long of shanks, pulling them out the ground like carrots. They pulling them out the ground like carrots, ready to go to war like they in gladiator school. Cutting each other, stabbing each other, doing all type of stuff. I'm looking at this like, yo, this is crazy. And then you got the police in the towers. They shooting down smoke grenades and stuff like that. Trying to stop, it's trying to stop everything that's going on. The next thing you know, after it's all done, you just laying down on the ground for hours 
and because the, the the yard is locked down because now they're trying to figure out who it was involved what people to cuff what people to send back and who wasn't involved and you just on the ground laying like this like you're superman laying in the superman position for like three four hours straight until they got everybody searched and ready and out of the yard you just gotta watch try to always be nosy with when it comes to certain things before you enter the yard and when i mean by being nosy like you had to know exactly what might go on in the yard like just don't be walking into the yard without checking with your boys or checking with the circle if you're in a circle try to get into a circle a little clip where you know a few dudes and y'all got your own table in your area where y'all could just talk and mingle and whatever y'all said will be just left at the table because those are your boys this is who y'all belong with this is how y'all stick to each other try to always get information it won't be wrong if you get information from other clicks too, but make sure there's somebody that you feel like is trustworthy that would be one of, one of your boys in the clip, you know? Because you never know what can happen in that yard. You might see all type of stuff. You might see some homo things going on. Yeah, the homo things going on in that yard. Homo things definitely going on in that yard, so you got to watch out for that too. Try not to be looking. Don't be looking. Don't try to start with any... Don't say anything slick, cause them homos can fight too. I don't care what you say. They gang bang the same way a gang banging with gang bang. They have their own circle and they have their own homos that will be ready to fight with you. And they can fight. Cause I didn't seen a lot of gay people beat a lot of gang bangers up. I didn't seen it happen. They will pull out shanks on you and they will do all type of stuff just to beat you up. Facts. Now you just gotta watch a whole bunch of things. When you go into a basketball court, if you like to play sports, if you like to play the handball, watch exactly who you involved with doing it. Because I've seen a lot of people get cut like that too. The dudes, a blood, couple bloods might ask you, yo, you want to play with us? Next thing you know, you're playing five on five or three on three. And then the next thing you know, you just get cut on the court. You don't even know why. They know who you are, but you don't, they don't know. You don't know that they know that who you are. Really? Seriously? They know who you are, but you don't, they don't, you don't know that. You don't, you're not thinking that they know who you are. You could be somebody that came from another jail and you was a rat. Somebody that came from another jail and you was a homo. The, 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 the streets talk, just like, just like the streets talk, prison talks. And I just got to advise all y'all just to watch your back when you into the yard. Know exactly who to be around with, know exactly who to chill with. Know exactly where to sit at. Know exactly just just how to function when you go to the yard. Because if you don't function and you enter the yard and you just sit at any table or you just jump on any phone, that's problem. That is automatically problems no matter how you do it. You don't want to do that. Just walk around. Walk around with somebody. It'd be best to walk around with somebody that you really know. Not somebody that he was in town with and you haven't seen him in years because you don't know what his situation is like anymore. Yeah, it's cool to chop it up with him, but try not to chop it up with him too much. Just get a quick feel, see what's good with him, and then just ease your way away from him because you don't know exactly what his situation is like. He could be somebody that's trying to take the next deal. Meaning, he got to hit, hit somebody before he go inside. Or he go into lights out before he go back inside to his cell. He might have to shoot and cut somebody. You don't know if that might be you that he wants. He got to do that to. So you just got this quick summary. Chop it up. Move it on. You don't want to talk to too many people in the yard your first day. Because then all these people are going to want to know you. And all the people are going to be looking at you. They're going to automatically look at you. That was one of my things. I, w I was light-skinned. So in every jail I went to, had a young face. You know, I had muscles. And I just stand out. I wasn't like somebody that was old and scrawny that they didn't have to really care about or look at. I was somebody that was young, light-skinned, and they didn't know if I was game banging or not. They didn't know if I was crip. They didn't know if I was blood. They don't know who. You got some bloods might be thinking I'm might be thinking I'm I might thought I was crip just because they ask me, yo, you banging? I tell them no. Or they ask me, yo, you banging? And I look at them like, like they funny. You know, you just got to watch out everything you do. 
people. Learn how to talk to people. Don't be violating people. When you walk past somebody in the yard, make sure you be like, excuse me or pardon self. Make sure you say those words because you can just walk past somebody and just, they look back at you like, what's up? Because it gets, it gets like that in jail. It really gets like that in that yard. They'll look at you, you walking past them, and they feel like you're trying to sneak up on them. They're going to look at you and be like, yo, what's up with you? So always make sure before you, before right when you pass passing somebody, you be like, excuse me, or pardon yourself. Be like, pardon, pardon yourself, brother. Say something. It's just respect. It's not about copping out. It's not about being scared about the next man. It's all about respect when you enter the yard. You have to respect each other. Because if people don't respect each other, then that's when all the riots is going to happen. All the fights are going to happen. All type of things are going to happen. And then next thing you know, you're just going to have a cut on your face. See, I don't got no cuts on my face. Next thing you know, you're going to just have problems. Next thing you know, you're not going to want to go to the yard because you feel like it's going to be problems. So you just got to watch your back when you go to the yard. That's it. Try not to talk to people. Spend the yard as much as possible. And avoid getting on the phone without knowing who you are going to be getting on the phone, whose phone you're going to be using. That's it. Just watch your back when you're in the yard because the yard gets dangerous. I'll hit a, I'll say um some more things tomorrow. I'll hit y'all up with some better topics. Tomorrow I'll be talking about what not to do when you go into the mess hall. Things not to do when you go to the mess hall and how to watch your back when you're in the mess hall too. Thank you.